Today we're going to be looking at rebuilding an Invicare concentrator compressor. You need to rebuild the compressor whenever the, the machine is operational but is making a large amount of noise. You'll frequently hear patients complain about this and it's due to the inside the housing that's rattling around. A simple fix though solves this issue. The first thing you're going to do is remove these screws here and back here. This will allow you to get the compressor free from the housing. We've now removed the screws and you can see that the little lever comes right off. Next, we're gonna remove this hose and this hose here. So then we'll be ready. Here is what the hose is like. Look once they're removed. You may need to use a screwdriver with a flathead to help wiggle the hose off of the connector piece. Um, that's okay, you're not gonna damage the hose as long as you're not jabbing it. Next, you'll see that these wires have a small holder here. Simply pull the wires free of the holder. It does snap wide open. And now you're able to pull the concentrator compressor out. Once you remove the compressor, spin it around so you get the back facing. Just look for these tags, you'll know it's facing the right direction. And now, even though the compressor is still connected to the concentrator from the wiring here, you're able to work on the rebuild. This will make it a simple fix. The screws at the top of the compressor need to be removed. These require using the proper style screw right here. Just look for your socket set and find what's appropriate. Place inside. And remove. After you've loosened all the screws with your socket set, uh, just to be faster, you can switch over to your screwdriver, as we're doing here. You can see after loosening, it's quite fast. And this one, you don't want to use the power drill yet, because sometimes the screws are really tight, and you can um, you can mess up the top of it, and you won't be able to get it off anymore. I don't know if you heard that, but uh, be sure to not use your power drill on these particular screws. Now that the screws are loosened, we're going to remove the top and keep it facing the direction that it was unscrewed from. This way you don't switch it around. That's very poor for the rebuild. There are two types of compressors that you will have to rebuild. Both will tell you right here which, which style of kit you need. You can see this is a gassed compressor. The other style is a Thomas compressor. Your gas repressor, compressor kit will look like this. This is the Thomas compressor rebuild kit. Not the heads of the gaskets are off. We have to remove these here using the same principle we just did. Use your socket wrench to find the appropriate, the appropriate screw, loosen, and then use your manual screwdriver. We have now loosened these and have begun removing the screws. If you're interested in what's making all the noise, you'll see right here there's this seal on the side of this gasket. And basically, inside your housing, it's wiggling around once the seal is older. So that's what you're hearing. Here's the concentrator kit, the concentrator rebuild kit that uh, with all the parts pulled out. Here are some new seals, or new gaskets, new seals, and screws, as well as the heads that you're replacing. You can see how silvery and worn out this is and really paper thin compared to how nice and rubbery this is and that's what's causing the noise is that gap between the two. The first thing you're going to do is take that metal seal that came with the compressor rebuild kit and put it right here. Your rings, once they're in, now you're going to take the actual seal, place it inside just on top, make it match, and then the piece you have to screw back in, your gasket head. There we go. We've got the basis of the seals ready. Next, grab the screws that came with the compressor rebuild kit and place them inside, just reversing the process of what you did earlier, taking it apart. It is important to keep these seals even, just as you would expect. You don't want any air to be rubbing around here. So what you, you want to go back and forth, 
screwing two or three times on one side and then two or three times on the other until your seal is all the way down. We have our one side done. You can see how far it is. We're now working on the other side. We'll show you this from start to finish so you can see approximately what you're looking for while doing this. Again, it is critical that the sides are balanced during here and you don't have extra seal over here or over here. And we're done with that part. Now to continue. Here's your original head gasket cap that we had. We're going to pull off these rings here because you've already replaced them and they're not necessary. Now again, keeping mindful of the direction that you originally pulled this off, you can see we still have the hose facing this way, so we've stayed completely accurate from how we originally took it off. We're going to pick it up, set it on top of the compressor, and then flip it upside down. This way, in no way, shape, or form can you confuse which direction that you had the compressor rebuild. Here are these small seals that came with the, with the compressor rebuild kit. We're gonna get rid of, we're gonna change these out next. You can use a flathead screwdriver or a pin, uh, pretty much whatever you like to get these out. The older ones, it doesn't matter if they tear, and they frequently will. Usually the rubber's quite dry by the time we're replacing them. You can see on this one, it's pretty worn out already. We would recommend that now that you have the seals open, you clean the top of these heads with some maticide and a cloth just to get rid of any dust or any other particulates that may interfere with the proper seal. Here's what the new one looks like. We're now placing the next one in. You can see pretty much it's simple, fits right on there. Next, we need to remove these small screws here and these plates and replace them as well. These small things will break inside the compressor and will generate a code that says timeout compressor. If you ever see that code, this is what you are ultimately going to be replacing. Though again, you may as well rebuild the entire compressor since the kit is all in one. We cannot purchase these individually, nor would you want to do that as its own style rebuild. So this, this fix will solve two things, the timeout compressor or a very loud compressor. As before, we're getting our socket wrench and we're just unscrewing these. Once the screw is removed, you can see that you've got your set. There's gonna be three pieces to this on the compressor rebuild. This screw, this small metal tab here, and then the tab that lays underneath it. These are all part of, again, parts of seals. Please be mindful of how thin this metal is. It's fairly easy to break. So while you're doing this transfer, don't be in a rush. Again, we'll clean around the holes that we just freed up. This is where you'll see dust and particulates get in. And now we're ready to replace. First, place the small, the, the long, thin piece of metal on the hole. Next, the smaller metal tab that goes atop it and then the screw. We would recommend that you're slightly off center from where you're going. You're looking to cover up this hole. As you're tightening this screw, you're going to slide this over just a bit, just by the natural motion. You do want to cover that hole entirely. So start here and then adjust as you're screwing. Now we've got it all just about locked in. Once it's all the way down, again, move it over and you'll see as the screwdriver tightens, it naturally adjusts it over. There we go. We have replaced this. You should be able to see just how dirty and rubbed this one is compared to the new one. And that's why we really want to replace everything in the, in the compressor rebuild, even if it's not tied to the direct problem. While this was not an issue, we were not getting the alarm from the concentrator. You can see it was fairly close to when you'd have to replace it anyway. So that's why it's good to be thorough on this and do all necessary steps. We've got our second one on now and we're tightening. 
in, continue to slide it over just a small amount while you tighten so that it's completely lined up. And we're done. You can see you can't see the hole that it was covering before on either one of these. The seals are now replaced. Now it's time to flip it back over. Again, doing the same exact motion we did before. If you've done this right, this large tube is going to be to your right side because when you turn it all the way around, it connects to over here. Now we're going to take the caps off. Simplest to use a flathead for this. Simply insert it over here and pull it off. And we found another set of seals and another set of tabs. We're basically going to create the same process we just did with these inner seals. You can see how dirty this is and how dirty it is in there. So again, we're going to clean it off a little. Just as before, loosen with your socket, then use your manual screwdriver to get the small screws off. And you're going to remove to get to these tabs. Again, you'll see how dirty it looks, and that's why we want to replace it. Now we're going to clean again, all the way around the area. looks much nicer. You'll see here is where the seals that we're going to replace this time. So again, you can get a flathead screwdriver or just a pin and pull them out. As before, we're not concerned with tearing these. If they happen to tear, that's okay. You can see here what these look like. They're dingy. They're certainly frayed here and here. So these would be an issue in short order. We're gonna clean around the area that we just removed. And place our new seals. Place your long tab over the hole, aligning the screw hole. Now you have another tab, heavier one. So it's thin and then heavy. Place your screw there. Over here. So here's what you're left with. Just as before, we're going to screw this in with the idea that it's slightly over so that when it tightens, it slides over the hole. And there's a changed one, same over here. And now we've cleaned and replaced our seals inside the gasket. One final thing when placing these in, you'll see that this piece here is sloped. The sloped side always goes down, not the straight side. So there's your sloped side, it's down, straight side up. Now we'll clean these, as we talked about earlier. Make sure that they're free of any dust and particulates. Then you're gonna place it on top, again, facing the same direction, be mindful of where you initially took it off.
Here are the screws that you initially took off of the compressor from these holes. You can see they are of different sizes. You have a longer one and a medium sized one. The longer ones go on the outside of the compressor and the medium ones go on the inside. Now all of our screws are replaced. I'm gonna use your manual screwdriver to put them back in. Again, we've used pretty much the same size bit the entire time, so once you identify the correct bit to use, you'll be fine. Always go in a crisscross motion. That way, you get the best seal possible. We want to make these as tight as possible. That's why we're going back and retightening again in the crisscross motion once the screws are all all the way down. Now we're going to pick up the compressor and flip it around and put it back inside the concentrator. You'll see here these springs are going to go into these holes right here. It'll rest inside. Once it's balanced in there, you'll know that you have it correct. Flip it up. Put it in. Adjust to get the springs right. And now it lays flat all the way across. Next, you'll reconnect all the hoses from where you first took them off. Slide your hose gripper down, retighten it with the screwdriver. Put your wires back into the gripper. And now your compressor has been basically put back together. We need to return the large bar that we initially took off that holds it in place. We screwed it back in here and all the way up here. And now it's fully restored. We're gonna replace the shell and then test the concentrator to make sure that it sounds appropriate. All right, we have it now on. We're listening for the sounds of the switching to make sure that our four-way valve is working appropriately. We're not hearing the loud rattling noises we heard before. Uh, this concentrator is now ready to be returned to service.